afternoon guys so got my new radio in for the mr2 doesn't have anything right now besides my stock one my dad just showed up too um so yeah i'm gonna try and figure out how to put this in order from crutchfield so it should make it a little bit easier i paid the i think it was like 10 or 15 bucks to have them pre-wire everything for me uh this makes it a little bit easier so i don't have to do anything not that wiring this would be all too hard but i just want to plug it in and go i just don't feel like messing with it for 20 bucks it's not gonna hurt nothing so going to go ahead and start taking the dash apart show you guys how to go about that I've never really seen anything online to, uh, how to install one of these but it seems pretty straightforward so go out to the car here and start ripping into it all right guys so I'm not going to say good afternoon or whatever I guess I usually do a couple things today number one I'm working on putting the radio in the car so I bought a radio from Crutchfield which pretty much most car enthusiasts know what Crutchfield is um, bought a plug-and-play harness from them got everything great went to go install it and one they made me a plug-and-play harness that was junk uh, number two uh, I had to redo it all great so I made them refund my money and send me a new one even though I don't need it because I already fixed this one but it's kind of principal at this point uh, the other thing was the actual head unit they sold me was no good when I plug it in it would pop and click I went through all the wiring again um, had them I went through three different tech support guys the head unit's bad pretty much they all gave the same consensus sucks so I have no radio can't drive the car without a radio in my opinion I like a little bit of tunage yes the car noise is nice but I need some tunes I need some music so I'm out of a radio right now until Crutchfield sends me a new one which I guess it's not a big deal but eh, it is what it is uh, the other thing is prime MR2 set my BPV which I guess is your how's that called bypass valve we have whatever it's called block off plate so this little guy right here uh, it's a block off plate that actually goes over oh also before I forget send me this cool like license plate frame too but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run the mischief one because just because I love that license plate even though prime number two is cool I really like I get it you know it's your number of sales but don't really like the giant phone number at the top um, but this little guy right here goes right here so this little guy here that is your I guess you'd be your stock blow off valve so you replace this here which right now which I just hit my elbow is vented to atmosphere so it makes a loud whoosh, whoosh noise and this should give me that um, this should give me the Australian noise as I call it just like that it would make that awesome noise um, now everyone's probably gonna say well Ryan why would you do that that's compressor surge that noise is what you're hearing is compressor surge Yes, I know, that is correct. It is still putting compressor search through it. Everyone I talk to, even Prime Member 2, I posted all the boards, everyone says they're running them for years upon years, daily driving them, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 miles, and not a single issue with their turbo. Um, you're just not running enough boost to really hurt them. That stock Toyota turbo is built so tightly and so well that it just doesn't seem to have any problems. Plus the max boost I can really run 17 and a half PSI on the stock ECU. Um, but what this will gain me is not just the noise, that was part of it. Um, but what I was really looking for is down low, it just seemed to really lag to me. And with the stock uh, BPV valve, it just didn't, I don't know, it just felt very laggy. For as small as a turbo that's on this car, the CT20B from the Gen 3 motor, it just felt super, super laggy. Uh, didn't give me the the umph I wanted to have when I wanted to you know, throttle on. It always felt like it kind of had to wait a little bit or it almost shut her down low. Now I'm also gonna pull the plugs on this car, um, check the gap on them and make sure everything's correct there too. Um, it probably doesn't help matters much that this isn't a cool plug car. Now the Gen 4, Gen 5 motor for the 3S GT is a cool plug, or COP as some people call it. Uh, this has a distributor, a rotor, that whole shebang, which is cheap, great, that's awesome for that aspect, but I prefer COP, I prefer cool unplugged. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, but besides that, we're all good to go. Another thing too, this right here, this is your stock catch can. Mine's cracked, like, yeah, it's cracked. So I'm gonna need a new one of those. I'll probably get one from Ty. Um, I'd rather just have a real catch can, even though everyone says that one's fine. Uh, my OCD just says that looks ugly. I would rather run a real catch can and have something that looks good. Uh, that's my opinion. But what's my opinion matter, right? I mean, I guess my opinion really doesn't matter. Um, but that's that's what I'm doing so far. So let's go ahead and install this real quick and see if it gives me any noise. I did take some before video. Unfortunately, it's on my phone, so hopefully it picks it up nicely. So let's go ahead and install this real quick. There's only one bolt at the bottom of the block, uh, the bypass valve there that actually holds that on, and then one singular vacuum hose here, and that comes off. It's that easy. Now, 
one thing I do want to mention, guys, here is your stock bypass valve. You can see how large it is compared to the block off plate there. Uh, one thing you have to do, if it doesn't, you need to take off that large orange O-ring unless you have a new one. I do not. Uh, I have a ton of O-rings, but nothing quite this large. It's going to seal as nicely. So I need to remove this and put that onto my new block off plate. One other thing you guys are going to do here is that little nipple there goes the whole way up and over into this vacuum line right here to the intake manifold. Now you can also obviously cap it right here, but I'm going to go ahead and remove this vacuum line also as it's just in the way and I'm going to take one of these caps here and plug it off right there. Um, I might be able to actually get this off by hand. Yep, these clamps are actually easier to get off than I thought. Take that off. I'm going to reuse one of these stock clamps, so go ahead and grab that. Shove this over like so. Squeeze this with my fingers here. And we're good to go. Seems a little loose, a little looser than I'd like it to be, but it'll be all right. So that should suffice for, for right now. I'll take this one off also, just because, well, it looks better. And there you go, that's it, done, finito. Ta-da, now let's get some noise out of it. So let me pull it out of the garage and do a little noise test for y'all. off as you guys can see and here I should say that's way quieter I hopefully the when I make this video the video I had before for my phone sounds better but this sounds a lot better than the block off did so I'm probably gonna put this back on for now till I find an aftermarket blow off valve that I like but honestly I should just try and keep this simple um, this works and it's the old saying if it works don't mess with it I don't know I don't know what the old saying is but if it ain't broke don't fix it I guess yeah um, so yeah it does look a lot cleaner without it though that's the one thing I don't really want to put it back on because that looks ten times nicer um, but it just sounds horrible and this is not meant that this car isn't ever meant to be I guess like my nice car like my super is supposed to be but that's kind of annoying so that's got to go back on now and yeah so let's go ahead and throw that back on because now I'm kind of annoyed all right guys so if you saw the beginning of this video it says yeah i just got done driving the car actually i just took my wife to go get lottery tickets because the lottery is up to 700 million dollars who doesn't want to hit for 700 fucking million dollars so yeah so let's go get lottery tickets and i drove the car and it's still fun but it's not as nearly as easy to drive as the mr2 is it has definitely become in this short amount of time it is now definitely the chore car um, I will say this though, the clutch pedal on this is way easier to depress than the MR2 pedal. That fucker is stiff as hell and like has a stroke that's so long on it. And the clutch pedal is right at the bottom, which I find really weird. Apparently all the aftermarket clutches for the MR2 for the E153 trans, is it E153 or 54? I think it's E153 trans, um, is like that. It's very, 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 very strange, but yeah, I don't understand all that. Um, it makes me want to go back to the old days of selling this car and trying something else. Like, like I'm a big Toyota guy and I've been wanting the trifecta, but do I want to keep screwing with this or do I want to move on and try a GTR out? The R35 is looking really appealing. Uh, price range is definitely there now. Um, I've talked to my tuner before, John Kerr up at um, well, JK Tuning, um, and he's had good luck with them doing small bolt-ons, E85, um, you know, using a Cobb access port and making very good power very easily. Um, it doesn't have as many issues. I shouldn't say these cars have issues, but it's just a much more comfortable ride, much simpler. My wife could drive it. It just looks like something I might want to get here in the near future. I want your all's feedback to replace this um, and just sell this off, get something else. I'm not sure what I'd sell it for. Before I get rid of it though, um, I'd, one thing I do want to sell and let you guys know that it is up for sale. I want to get rid of it and go ahead and take care of this beforehand. Let's go over here. 
Catch can here, I want gone. I want to go ahead and get rid of it. I'm going to do a recirculated one um, and have it circ down into the actual intake here itself. But I want to get rid of it. 400 bucks for everything for the custom catch can and the AN fittings and lines. Um, the red horse fittings and lines, that's not cheap um, AN eBay stuff. That is it's about as good as you're going to get. I'm trying to think of maybe, I guess, XRP, which is I have some XRP hoses and stuff on that. That would be creme de la creme when I would speak of AN fittings and hoses. But red horse is right up there. Um, like I said, guys, 400 bucks. Let anybody know if they want it. Uh, hit me up and I'll sell it off to them. I'm going to do a. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do OCD work setup on this car, um, do a closed catch can, and just eliminate any smells that I'm having. Uh, I just the more the more I want it to be able to drive with my wife. Um, that's just one more thing I could do to maybe keep the car if I would do something like that. Um, also fix the clutch and get away from a six puck and go to a twin disc like a tilt and twin disc. Or I've spoke to Victor over at Induction Performance. Um, he had mentioned they have a Clutch Master 850 clutch that he recommends. Um, it's very easy to modulate, will hold the power quite easily, and it won't give me as many issues. When I try to take off with a six puck, it tends to shudder. Um, and at first, I thought I didn't have the clutch bled far enough. Um, so I rebred it, rebred it, rebled it two more times just to make 100% sure that it was bled correctly. And it was. There's no bubbles, no pockets left. Um, and then having a couple friends drive it, driving their six puck cars, that's just how it is. Don't really like it. Uh, I didn't realize that just because I've never owned one before. So it's definitely a little bit of a learning curve for myself. Um, I'd like to not have to deal with that anymore and go to a twin disc. Uh, Chris Navardi, who I've been posting up on Instagram, he's the one that's always selling R154s. Um, he actually has that tilt and twin disc right now uh, for an R154 that he's not using since he's going to a T56 or is he going TR6060, one of the two. And um, he said he let it go for pretty much cheap. Most of it's new. I think the plates need refurbished or whatever, but the rest of it is actually brand new. There's just plates that he has that need redone or needs new plates, one of the vice versa or something of that nature. But let me know what you all think. I'm pretty sure that I love the car. Like, I do love it. I'm definitely a toy enthusiast. I've devoted a lot of my life, and that sounds stupid, but I really have devoted a lot of my time to research and learn everything I can about Toyota. I learned manufacturing because of Toyota. Um, let me know what y'all think. Um, I think an R35 would really suit me well. I think it'd be cool for the channel to do stuff, but at the end of the day, it's what you guys want to see. What do you want to see for me? How do you want me to go about the channel? Um, MR2 is going to be around for a little bit here. That's going to be a fun toy to have. So let me know what y'all think and uh, keep me posted. All right, guys, thank you very much. I do appreciate y'all tuning in per usual. Um, give me your feedback. Let me know what y'all think. Per usual, check out down below. I got my Facebook and Instagram, and I'll link it right here real quick to make it easy for you guys to snap on. Um, I'm always posting stuff way ahead on Instagram. If you ever go over there, I'm posting like 10, 11 times a day because it's really easy to post to Instagram. You just pop up pictures, videos. I'm always posting stuff away ahead of time there just because I'm so impatient. So go check it out. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.